Today, we'll be doing the second module of the lesson, the blue carbuncle. In the first module, we saw that when Dr. Watson came to visit Sherlock Holmes, he was examining a hat. This hat was given to him by Peterson, the commissioner of police. Sherlock Holmes studied this hat very carefully and he drew many conclusions about the owner of this hat. He said that he was a man of great intelligence and he was financially well-to-do of a few years back. But of late, this man has come down financially and is no more a man of vision. The owner of the hat had some sort of self-respect for himself. He was a middle-aged man who led a very lonely life. He applied lime cream on his hair and his hair had been recently cut. Now we move on to the next paragraph. Look into your books, children. Page number 114. I must confess that I am quite unable to follow you. For example, how did you deduce that this man was intellectual? Holmes clapped the hat upon his head. It came right over the forehead and settled upon the bridge of his nose. It is a question of cubic capacity, he said. A man with so large a brain must have something in it. The word deduce means find out. And the words cubic capacity means volume. So Dr. Watson is asking him, how could you conclude or how did you find out that this man was intelligent? Then Holmes put the cap on his head. It was a big hat, children. It came right over the forehead, somewhere near his nose, you can say. So Sherlock Holmes is saying, a man with a big head will wear a big hat, isn't it? And a man who's having a big head is supposed to have a large brain. And obviously, people with large brain are intelligent. It's a question of common sense. So the man had a big head. Big heads generally have large brain. And obviously, a man with large brain will be intelligent. Now, the next paragraph. The decline of his fortunes. This hat is three years old. These flat brims, curled at the edge, came in then. If he could buy so expensive a hat three years ago and has no new hat since then, he has certainly gone down in the world. So now Dr. Watson is asking him, how did you say that he has come down financially? Fortunes means wealth. So how can you say that his wealth has come down? He is no more rich. Then Sherlock Holmes is saying that the hat which he is examining now is an old one. Three years old. Three years ago, this hat was a huge hit that time. It came in as a fashion. The words flat brims means flat edges of the hat. And it was quite an expensive hat three years ago. If this man could buy such a costly hat three years ago, and now also he is using the same hat, which has almost become old, torn and tattered, but he could not replace it now. He could not buy a new hat now. This means that the man was rich three years ago, but now his financial condition is bad. Now, the next paragraph. How about the foresight? Holmes put his finger on a little disc and loop on the hat, evidently meant for a hat securer, but without the required elastic band. He said, these discs are never sold upon hats, so he must have specially ordered them to be put in as a precaution against the wind. This shows a certain amount of foresight. But since he has not taken the trouble to replace the broken elastic, it is obvious that he has less foresight now. The other points, that he is middle-aged, that his grizzled hair has been recently cut, and the use of lime cream are gathered from a close examination of the lower part of the lining. Also, the dust is not the gritty grey dust of the street, but the fluffy brown dust of the house, showing that the hat has been hung up indoors most of the time. The marks of moisture on the inside are proof that the wearer 
perspired very freely and could not therefore have had regular exercise. The word precaution means safety, to take proper safety measures. Gritty grey dust of the street means the dust from the road which generally contains particles of stone and sand. The word wearer means the one who wears or the one who was wearing the hat. Perspired means sweating. So here, Dr. Watson is asking, how could you deduce about the foresight? How could you conclude that he was a man of proper vision? Then Sherlock Holmes is showing him little disc and loop on the hat. That man had put a sort of elastic band on this little disc and loop so that his hat doesn't fly away in the wind. So Sherlock Holmes is saying that such discs and loops are not sold on the hat. He had specially ordered it. But now this elastic is broken and he has not taken the trouble to replace it. Which shows that this man was intelligent. He was a man of vision long back. But now he is not taking trouble to take care of his hat. And the other points which he said that he was a middle-aged man about his grizzled hair. Grizzled hair means grey hair. And the use of lime cream. All these points he understood by closely examining the hat. He also said that the hat had a lot of dust in it. It was not the dust of the road. If this man would have worn this hat and come out of his house, he would have collected the dust of the road on his hat, isn't it? But the dust which was found on this hat was the dust of found inside the house, the fluffy brown dust found inside the house. So this shows that this man did not go out often. His hat was hung inside and hence dust particles got accumulated in it. Not only that, he is saying that this owner of the hat was a man who sweated a lot and hence he did not care much about his health. And next then Watson is asking, but his wife ceasing to love him. The word ceasing means stopping. So he's asking, how could you say that his wife is not loving him? How could you deduce that from this hat? Then Sherlock Holmes is saying, when your wife allows you, my dear Watson, to go out with dust upon your hat, I shall fear that you two have lost your wife's affection. So he's saying that, Dr. Watson, if your wife allows you to go with dust on your hat, that means she is not loving you. Generally, wives are supposed to take care of their husband's belongings, isn't it? So it was his wife's job to see that the hat is clean. She should have dusted the hat. But then she did not do it, which means that the owner of the hat, his wife did not love him much. And then Sherlock Holmes was making fun of Dr. Watson and saying that if you also go out with dust on your hat, it means that your wife is also not loving you. So let's see what Dr. Watson argues and says. But he might be a bachelor. No, he was bringing home the goose to his wife. Remember the card on the bird's leg? So Dr. Watson is saying he could be a bachelor, isn't it? How can you say that his wife is not loving him? Maybe he's a bachelor. Then Sherlock Holmes is arguing and saying, no, he was bringing the goose for his wife. It was Christmas morning. Do you remember the small card found on the bird's leg? What was written on that, children? It was written for Mrs. Henry Baker. So obviously, this man was carrying the goose for his. Now, the next paragraph. As Holmes said this, the door flew open and Peterson rushed in. See what my wife found in the goose crop. He held out his hand and displayed a brilliant blue stone. So as Holmes and Watson were discussing this, suddenly Peterson, the commissioner of police, walks in. He shows them a brilliant blue stone. 
which his wife had found from the goose crop. Crop means the bird's neck. And he's saying that he was shocked, he was surprised. Peterson is, uh, you can say, somewhat excited to show them this brilliant, costly stone. Now, the next paragraph. Holmes sat up with a whistle. Peterson, said he, do you know what you have got? A diamond, sir, a precious stone. So Holmes sat up with a whistle, means he sat up with a start. He was shocked. He's asking Peterson, do you know what you have got? And Peterson is saying, of course I know. It's a diamond, a very precious stone. Now, Holmes is correcting him. He's saying it is the precious stone. When do we use the children? When we know what precisely the thing is. So he's saying it is the precious stone, which means Holmes actually knows what or to whom does this diamond or this precious stone belongs to. Now, the next paragraph. Not the Countess of Morka's blue carbuncle, I exclaimed. Precisely so. I ought to know its size and shape as I have read the advertisement about it in the Times every day lately. There is a reward of a thousand pounds for finding it. Now Dr. Watson is asking, is this the blue carbuncle belonging to the Countess of Mokar? Now the word Countess is the feminine gender of the word Count. Count and Countess, they are the noble rank. It's a High rank, you can say. So the countess had lost a blue carbuncle. Blue carbuncle is a rare gem and it has got a very exceptional value. Now, when Dr. Watson asked him, is it the blue carbuncle belonging to the countess of Morka? Holmes is replying, exactly so. The word precisely means exactly. He's saying that, he had read about it in the newspapers. And the Times, the word, the Times referred to the name of a newspaper. And he's saying, a reward of thousand pounds have been declared for this. The one who finds this blue carbuncle, he will get a reward of a thousand pounds. It's a lot of money, children. Now, the next paragraph. It was lost, if I remember correctly, at Hotel Cosmopolitan. I remarked, precisely, that was on the 22nd, just five days ago. John Horner, a plumber, was accused of having stolen it from the ladies' jewel case and is under trial at a court now. James Ryder, attendant at the hotel, gave evidence that Horner had been alone in the countess' room, mending a bar in the grate, but the stone was not found either on Horner's person or in his house. So Dr. Watson is saying that this blue carbuncle was lost in a hotel. It was lost in Hotel Cosmopolitan. And then Dr. Watson, when he said this, Holmes is replying that that is exactly what happened on 22nd. Just five days ago he is saying that. So what date is today? Or the day when they are discussing it, it is 27, two days after Christmas. And John Horner, a plumber, that man was charged of having stolen this blue carbuncle from the Countess of Mokha's jewellery case. The word accused means to be charged. And an attendant or a worker in a hotel named James Ryder had given a false evidence saying that he had seen Horner taking it from that lady's jewel case because he was in that hotel room that time and he was mending a bar. And when the police searched, they could not find it. Now the next paragraph. Holmes was thoughtful for a moment. Then he said, We need to solve the sequence of events from the disappearance of the stone at the hotel to its reappearance in the crop of the goose. To do this, we must find the gentleman from whom the goose came and the simplest way of doing that is to put an advertisement in all the evening papers. Give me a pencil and a slip of paper. 
found at the corner of Good Street a goose and a black cat. Mr. Henry Baker can have the same by applying at 6.30 this evening at 221B Baker Street. Here you are, Peterson. Have this put in the evening papers. And the stone? I shall keep the stone. Peterson, just buy a goose on your way back and leave it here with me. So now Sherlock Holmes was determined to solve this case. So he said, we have to somehow find out how did this goose get this blue carbuncle. Goose is not going to eat a diamond, right? So he said that the best way is to find the owner of this goose and the hat. And to do that, we can put an advertisement in all the leading newspapers. So he took a pencil and a slip of paper and he wrote that. At the corner of the good street, a goose and a hat was found. Mr. Henry Baker can come and take it by 6.30 in the evening. He even gave the address as 221B Baker Street. Then he told Peterson to put this in the evening newspapers. Then Peterson asked him, what should I do with this stone, with this diamond? And he said that Sherlock Holmes was going to keep this blue carbuncle with him. Sherlock Holmes even asked Peterson to buy a goose and to leave it with him. That is to leave the goose with Sherlock Holmes. Now the next paragraph. When Peterson had left, I asked Holmes, do you think this man Henry Baker had anything to do with the theft? I think it is likely that Henry Baker is absolutely innocent. I shall, however, be certain only when we have an answer to our advertisement. So when Peterson left, Dr. Watson is asking him, Do you think Henry Baker is really the thief? Then Sherlock Holmes replied that he doesn't think that Henry Baker was a thief. In fact, he'll be only certain or he'll be only sure when he sees who all have responded to the advertisement. Now, the next paragraph. As Holmes had expected, Mr. Henry Baker came to see him at 6.30 that evening. His appearance and manners confirmed that, confirmed what Holmes had inferred on the basis of his hat. When Holmes told him that his goose had been eaten, he was a little upset. But when Holmes offered him a newly bought goose as a substitute, he accepted it gladly. They showed that he was unaware of what the crop of his own goose had contained. Giving him his hat, Holmes casually asked him where he had brought the goose. Baker replied that he had brought it at the Alpha Inn near the museum. So as they had expected, by 6.30 in the evening, Henry Baker came to meet them. And Sherlock Holmes was very sure that whatever he had concluded by studying that hat, everything was correct about Henry Baker. Whatever he could deduce from that hat, all the characters, what he found out about this Henry Baker was correct. As they were talking, Sherlock Holmes told Henry Baker that they had eaten his goose and that man felt a bit sad. But then to cheer him up, Sherlock Holmes told him that they had brought a new goose. The word inferred means concluded. Substitute means to replace. So Sherlock Holmes told him that they had replaced his goose with a new one and the man very ex happily accepted it. This showed that Henry Baker was unaware that his own goose had a very costly stone in its crop. When Henry Baker was going with that goose, Sherlock Holmes gave him his hat and in a very casual manner he asked him, from where did he buy that goose, the one he was carrying, on Christmas morning? Henry Baker told him that he had brought it at a place called Alpha Inn near the museum.